obviously it's a it's an important game for us. It's a, a great effort, a great win. Um, the start to the game was important, gave us momentum. You know, great teams are always going to make runs. Um, when they came back and took the lead in the second half, <clears throat> you know, we really exhibited, uh, you know, great poise and we, and we stayed aggressive. Um, that's what you got to do in a playoff series. I thought, uh, <clears throat> you know, Porzingis was, was, was very patient in this game. Uh, you know, he's got a top five defensive player in the world guarding him, you know, and Kawhi Leonard. Um, they have, you know, that much respect for, you know, his abilities at the offensive end. And he did a very good job of staying patient and finding um, ways to create advantages as the game went on. Um, there were a couple stretches. I think that, uh, you know, the, the, he got a little frustrated and took a couple of shots that may not have been the best shots. But in the end, <clears throat> I loved his, uh, his discipline, his patience. And the big free throws were, were huge at the end of the game. Uh, and then the dunk, you know, kind of put a, put a, put a cap on it. Uh, Doncic was great. Finney Smith was great. You know, Kleber, those guys all dug in really hard defensively against, you know, two of the best players in the world. And, you know, we've just got to uh, maintain the edge and, uh, you know, we'll look at the film and, and see which things we can, what things we can do better. There are many. Uh, they'll do the same. Um, and then we got to get ready for Tuesday. Okay, please state your name and outlet as I call on you. Brad, go ahead. Yes, this is Brad Townsend from the Dallas Morning News. Uh, Rick, you mentioned you guys keeping your poise uh, in the second half. You know, some of those guys keeping their poise, you know, Finney Smith uh, in particular, is really an unsung player. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about his growth and coming in, coming up big in a situation like this under under pressure. Yeah, and this is where you know year two um, in the playoffs. <clears throat> you know, this is where you uh, you take advantage of the experience that you had in year one. And uh, look, Dorian's worked extremely hard. You know, over a five year period, you know, four or five year period, he's one of the most improved players uh, in the NBA. Um, it's happened at a gradual rate. So, you know, he never, ever gets mentioned for, you know, most improved player in, in a given season. Um, but he is a fearless competitor. Um, he has great belief in himself. His three point shooting tonight was absolutely key to the win. You know, we ran a after time out play in the first half to get him a, a three. Uh, he got open and knocked it in, you know, um, and that was at a, at a point where I think, you know, we had been up eight or 10 and they made a run to get it to six and that put it back to nine or something like that. Um, and he's taken on, you know, hellacious matchups every night. You know, it's George and Leonard in this series. Um, and then every, every night, you know, he's got, got one of the best players on the other team. Some nights, some nights it's a point guard, you know, some nights it's a four man. Um, so his versatility is key, but uh, he was great tonight. Tim McMahon. Uh, Tim McMahon, ESPN. Rick, uh, can you talk about the way that, that Luca was able to attack switches and, and basically force the Clippers to, to abandon, uh, you know, playing that way defensively, and then the way other guys responded when they worsened it into Adam? Yeah. You know, Luca's seen virtually every coverage known to mankind, you know, every kind of double team, every kind of switching scenario, switching and um, and then, you know, double teaming, you know, 30 feet away from the basket, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's, it's just, a, it's just a matter of, of getting to the right spots when he gets double teamed. Um, he's obviously very good against switches. He mixed up, you know, the, the step backs and the drives. Uh, and I thought there were a couple of times he could have gotten to the free throw line down the stretch, but we're, we're unlucky. Didn't get the whistle. Um, but he's got to keep, given them a different dose of looks, you know, um, with a mixture of drives and, and shots and, and drives to passes to respaces. Um, but he's a very unique player for a 22 year old, you know, um, the level of poise that he has, um, and his ability to, to, you know, slow down the game, um, to see what's going on. Even when the clock is at, you know, six or seven seconds, he still is able to slow it down 
and hold that ball just long enough to get a teammate a great look. So um, he was great tonight, and I thought his defense was very good too. Tim Cato. Hey, Rick, you were obviously just talking about Dorian and his development. Um, can, can you take us back to, like, even as he came in as a rookie, and, and what, what, did, what did you make of him as a player? What challenges did you give to him about where he needed to improve? And how, how, how has he done that so successfully over the course of his, his career here? Well, you know, as a rookie, he was always a soft-spoken, um, low-key personality, but an intense competitor. Um, you know, he had played uh, stretch four in college and shot a decent three-point number, but it wasn't, it wasn't the kind of three-point number in college that would get your attention and, 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 and ever make you believe that it was likely that he could become a three-man in the NBA. Usually it goes the other way. Usually guys – you know, um, or, or, you know, three men in college and they become NBA fours or twos and they become threes. Um, he knew that his shot needed to be overhauled. Um, you know, the first year he got a lot of valuable experience. Um, and then he really started to work on his shooting. And, you know, Peter Patton, our shooting coach, has done a tremendous job, not only on his mechanics, but also uh, giving him an extreme amount of confidence. And, you know, look, this is what player development is all about. It, it, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, you look at Dorian Finney-Smith, you look at Maxi Kleber. But these guys, you know, they came in, they established that they could play in the NBA because they could do things at the defensive end. And then their offense had to evolve. You know, Maxi had to go from being a mid-range shooter to a, to a, a you know, what he is now, is, which is a knockdown three-point shooter. And, and Dorian has done the same thing. And, and so um, the other thing about Dorian, I think that, that, you know, flies under the radar, you know, with uh, you know, when you have stars like Doncic and Porzingis is, you know, the, the leadership role that he has on our team. You know, he's a guy who, when he speaks up, um, you know, the locker room goes quiet and people listen. And uh, he's, a man of, he's a man of few words, but, uh, but when he speaks, you know, uh, our guys pay close attention. All right, we're just going to do a few more. Um, Mark Medina, go ahead. Hi, Mark Medina, USA Today. Um, how have you seen things evolve on Lucas and with how he handles frustration if he gets in foul trouble or if he doesn't get a call that goes his way? Well, it's, you know, getting 15 technicals, you know, with six games to go will uh, – will put you in a situation where, you know, you've got to take a close look at it and down the stretch of the season, you know, he did a great job. Um, and there were plenty of times he could have been frustrated and gotten one, um, but he didn't, um, you know, he remembers the series last year and, and some of the, the chippy things that happened. And I thought last year in, in the series, you know, he did a great job of maintaining his poise Um Look, this is this is his time of year. Um, and he's one of the smartest basketball players you will ever meet at any age, at any level. And he knows, you know, that um, we've got to be a next play mentality team and that he's got to be one of the leaders, you know, of that charge. And, uh, and this series will, will continue to be extremely challenging um, in that vein because of the physical nature of it. Um, and, and the fact that, uh, you know, the Clippers have a bunch of great defenders and they're throwing all kinds of different looks at him as well. All right, the last one is Mac Engel. Uh, hey, Rick, uh, Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Rick, uh, the fact that you won this game. Mac, sorry, I accidentally muted you. Mac, start over, please. Yeah, we're good. Okay. My, my fault, sorry, guys. It's all right, Mac Engel for with Star Telegram. Rick, the fact that you won this game with production coming from the likes of Hardaway and Dorian Finney-Smith and Maxi Kleba all in the fourth quarter, what does that do for their individual confidence and then your confidence as a team knowing you can win games like that without being carried by Luca and KP there in the fourth? Yeah, we, we've, we've got a confident group overall, really. And, and look, I mean, I thought Josh Richardson played a very important role in this game. You know, he made big shots. He was great defensively. Um, the shot he made, I think, at the end of the third quarter, 
um, was a huge was a huge play and a huge momentum play. Um, and look, and here's a guy that you know three games in the season, you know, was asked to go from a starting role, uh, which he's been for the last five years, to a you know to coming off the bench, and and that's hard. That's hard and it's difficult. Um, but he was you know he's willing he was willing to do it, and his response tonight you know was was tremendously important. You know, Brunson, you know this guy's been in. You know, he, he'd been playing in big games his whole life and he couldn't wait to play in the playoffs. Uh, he didn't play a perfect game today. Nobody did, but, but he had a very consistent attitude about how he was going to approach it. Um, and that's the way our whole team does it. You know, uh, you know, you go from Hardaway, you go like Trey Burke, who didn't even get in the game today. I mean, this guy's going to be ready to play. Uh, Powell who played short minutes, you know, during a stretch where they were throwing a, a frustrating uh, switching defense at us, you know, he came in there and made some really positive things happen, you know? Um, so look, we're, we're a strength in numbers operation. Um, you know, Luca is a great, great player and KP is a great player. Um, but, you know, as a team, we know that everybody has got to be ready and everybody's got to pull their weight when called upon. And, uh, today we are able to do that, which is great. Um, and the, the you know challenge going forward is going to be to maintain the edge um, and keep the fight. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. I'll